this episode of Skeptico. A show about Nazis. Desertion ist Verrat, Land. Bad und Führer. Bad und Vaterland. In a show about why hola hoaxers annoy me so much. Let's get to the number. Because I was forced, because of this exchange that I had, to kind of go do some, is there new research being done? Which is one of the other claims that the whole hoaxers make is like, hey, they're shutting down the research. There's no I debate. This is, want to find in some Holocaust. countries, is banned by law. Well, I'm now sharing yep. on the screen okay, let's a see. published paper. Here mm -hmm. it's published in Science and Advances. This study identifies an extensive phase of hyper-intense killing in which 1.47, a million and a half Jews, more than 25% of the Jews killed over the six years of, the, of World War II were murdered by the Nazi in an intense 100-day, yep. three-month surge. So that first clip was from a new Nazi movie on Netflix, Blood and Gold. Boy, I love those Nazi movies. And the second was from an exchange I had with today's guest, Al Borealis from Forum Borealis, who joined me to have this very, very uh, kind of intense, in-depth, multi-layered discussion about some of these issues. Now, the conversation is just not going to make it on YouTube. YouTube is so unfair how they censor, you know, and a lot of people still don't understand that how YouTube does this. And you'll, you, you'll go over to Rumble. This will be on Rumble. And I, if you want to watch the video, you know, you can go watch it on Rumble and you'll be like, wow, I've heard, you know, all of this stuff before in other places on YouTube, but that's not how it works. They still give you strikes for uh, content producers like me and small people, and they're just arbitrarily. I don't know who else gets it, but Al talks about getting a strike too. So you just can't do it on YouTube anymore. You get striked out, and then all the rest of your content that's ever been on there throughout history, you know, gets taken down as well. So a lot of these shows that I'm gonna do are gonna wind up going straight to Rumble, and that's okay. That's great. In the meantime, I'll play a couple of clips here that I'll kind of add in, and then you can just go to Rumble and find the rest of the show. Or most people listen to the show in podcast form, and there the censorship isn't so bad. So for the folks watching this on YouTube, here are those clips. For the rest of everybody, here's the full show. Okay, so where I thought we might start is uh, Johnny Vedmore. Yeah. Since we both interviewed him about Johnny Vedmore is, of course, a partner with Whitney Webb at Unlimited Hangout. They've done some absolutely fantastic investigative reporting work. We both tuned into him when World Economic Forum stuff was especially heated up about a year ago. That seems to have slipped off the radar a little bit, but don't think for a second that they've that they've let up on the agenda at all. So uh, why don't you go back and tell folks about why you felt like the World Economic Forum stuff was important at the, at the time that you did it. And then let's try and link that back into this conversation I want to have about Nazis and Jews, because I think that jumps us right into the middle of it in some ways that you didn't fully explore on your interview with him, but I did. So I'm going to use that as kind of a battering ram to kind of pull you into this thing. I mean, why it's relevant, why it's important. Do I really have to argue for that? But I wanted to focus on the Nazi roots of, I mean, there's Jewish roots too, right? Well, I think we kind of started there and, and worked our way back in that I'd again, but I'll try and roll it forward. I don't agree with your characterization about how the Jews are treated throughout history. I think the Jews have a special relationship with the Christians that's built into the stew again. It's built into Pontius Pilate saying that phony scene. It's just as phony as Josephus saying, hey, man, you got the Messiah. That's Vespasian. The next fake phony thing is Pontius Pilate saying, gosh, I, I met with this guy. 
I, man, I'm trying to go along with you guys, but this guy, he seems like a good guy to me, this Jesus guy. I wash my hands. And the Jews say, no, 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 he's got to go down. Let it be on us. That creates a special relationship between Christianity and Judaism. And both are participating in that relationship because there is no logical reason for Judaism to survive, to thrive, other than as kind of the Bobo doll, the kick him when he's down object of Christianity. Christianity defines but Judaism. But Judaism didn't survive. What's called Judaism today isn't the same. You know, Hebrew was a dead language 100 years ago. They reconstruct it. It's like we take Latin and we implement it. How can you it. say that? I mean, that goes because everything we, we've talked about in the last hour. No. The Judaism doesn't survive. Oh, when, this when, is too deep, man. Uh, no, if you no, talk no. with experts in, in, in Judaism, no, in the religion. No, hold up, hold up. Most uh, of the stra uh, Judaic stra strains are dead. What has survived and is called Judaism today is a small segment of the original religions. A very fundamentalist very poor representation of Judaism. There is also some mystical things that have survived, like Kabbalah, etc. But basically, most of Judaism is dead. We have some survivors, like the Hasidic Jews and other groups. But anyway, you know what I realized? from from It was useful for us to go back, because I just realized that what happened there, according to at least your take on it, is exactly the same that happened uh, uh, with the Nazis after the World War II. See, the, uh, you, uh, and, and, and maybe this was you were misspoken, but you were right because you said uh, the Christians and the Jews were having a special relationship. Fact is, Josephus was, were operating um, before they managed to hijack Christianity. But it seems that that faction that Joseph, Josephus represented, it's the exact same philosophy and ideology who took over Christianity. And by year 325, uh, after the third uh, council in Ikea, they had complete control over Christianity. That's when they flushed out all among others, not just, but among others, the Gnostics. So it seems to me that that psyop that begun, who knows when it began, but at least that Josephus represented, that they succeeded in taking over Christianity. I think it's the same people who Paul represented because he's he's exact same figure as Josephus. Josephus was a Jew. He was fighting against the Romans. Something happened. You speculate he he got a knife on his throat, and then he he was a chicken shit and sold him out. And now he became more uh, <laughs> Catholic than the Pope. The same happened with Paul. Paul was hunting down Christians. He was a mercenary. He was a Roman mercenary again, working for the Roman state, like Josephus. And then he had this bullshit, uh, that this is my uh, skepticism, revelation on the on the path to Damascus. Oh, a cross in the sky, and now I'm suddenly... Look, if I was in his shoes, I would realize eventually, God damn it, this Christian virus is taking off. I can't just, we can't just stop it by me killing random individuals. How can I really stop this uh, revolutionary impulse? Hmm. What if I pollute the whole thing? What if we take over the whole ideology? That's what eventually they ended up doing, Paul did. And that's what I think Josephus represents also in terms of the uh, Jews. So they both have a similar function. And this is very similar also, but we can talk about that later, what happened with the Nazis after the Second World War. I don't know if you we grasp to go the to essence of what the... I'm saying here. Well... <laughs> I totally understand. I just, I, I really disagree in, in a fundamental okay. way, but that's okay because, yeah. you know, if, if we can't get to the point where we're in that kind of genuine disagreement, then we're probably at the precursor of that where we're just completely yeah. talking past each other. And we are not Maybe. talking past each other. We are okay. basically handling the same set of facts. I love it. Council of Nicaea, Constantine, you know, all that, you know, sees the, the, we could, we could spend hours on that, but I really want to poke you because it's the skeptical way inquiry to perpetuate doubt. I, you said, okay, Alex, but I don't see the link. And then I said, well, the link is right here. The link is the blood libel. The link is Jews are killing Christian children. 
And this is like from 1500, they're saying that. And then in 1600, they're saying that. And then it dies down for a little, hey, we can all get along, can't we, here? And then- Oh, oh, wait a minute. Uh, Put a dent on that. Uh, Toledo in Spain, just one example of many. 1492. Complete opposite opposite thing happened. Uh, uh, you also have it in this ancient city of uh, what the f- was but it? But you're kind of you're kind of slipping. No, no, past wait, the wait, point. wait. The opposite happens too. There are oases in Europe in this period where not only are they getting along, they are directly cooperating. There are schools of right. education: of Muslims, Christians, uh, Jews, even non-Abrahamic religions are represented. So, so if we cherry pick parts of history in Europe where they have been. Uh, knocking down on Jews, then we also need to balance that with the opposite having no, happened, we, we or at least to. balance it with we, other we, people than Jews being knocked down too. Not just we don't. Jews. We we don't because okay. what we're talking about, what you tried to bring us back to, and I'm going to bring you yeah. back. I'm going to yeah, yeah. bring you back where you did, is okay. the Nazis, right? So w- what I'm saying is the justification that the Nazis give to the general population in Germany and the world. Because remember, at the beginning, the Nazis are kind of like, well, what should we do with these people? Should we just ship them all out? We want to, we hate them. We want to get rid of them. And there's there's a lot of, uh, well, like, don't send them over here kind of thing. Ship them to Madagascar, for example. And the point is, the point is that I'm making is, if you don't go there in terms of tracing that back to the Josephus thing that I mentioned, to the Pontius Pilate washing of your hands thing. And I, I still want to push you on that because you go, well, you know, fundamentals. No, that is, you can, the fundamental belief of Christianity is Jesus and that Jesus dies on the cross. This is the, the fundamental point that he is rebelling Poorly against. On Christianity, yes. He is rebelling against the Jews. He's rebelling against the Jewish priests. And he goes to the Roman governor and says, I don't see any problem with this guy. I wash my hands. So when when Hitler reboots the blood libel and the idea that the Jews are actually kidnapping little Christian kids and eating them and doing all this other, he is tapping into a deep, deep psychologically planted social engineering project that began 2000 years ago. And so that's point number one. And I'm going to slip in point number two is the only reason that that stays alive is because Judaism is dragged along in the wake of Christianity. Yes, Christianity is fake and it's manufactured by Constantine and it's used and stuff like that. But you can't have Christianity go forward through all this history without dragging Judaism along. And every once in a while, as you point out, not all the time, but every once in a while, you can dredge it up and use the same old thing and say, gosh, darn those Jews. And remember, they killed Jesus. Don't forget that. And that's what this thing is about. Well, uh, do people care that he killed Jesus? I mean... I don't think that anything is about this. I think this is one of the intellectual or theological excuses they can use um, against Jews. Because God knows Catholics did it. But you have to look at the pattern of how power uh, operates. It's like saying, you know what? It's like saying, oh, they're smacking down on the right wing. The right wing. They're smacking down on every wing that is not a part of the establishment. This is like, oh, we are specially chosen as suppressed people. They can see, say they are Jesus killers, right? Uh, but um, at the end of the day, you should also hate uh, Italians then because uh, the Jews wouldn't be in that position if it wasn't for Pilato. So it, it doesn't make really a big sense that this is so big. And who really cares? Who really cares today? Uh, yes, it's a ex- very good excuse. So let's grant, uh, grant that it's an excuse. But uh, uh, the big picture is that power does what it needs to smack down on dissent. And uh, uh, with the Nazis, uh, they uh, didn't even need the religion thing because they were just flirting with Christianity in the beginning when they needed to build up the Nazi party. Eventually, they came clean and said, you know, maybe parts of Catholicism was preserved because of the Bayern, heavy Bayern influence in the Nazi philosophy. But certainly very soon, 
they smack down on the Protestant Christianity. So uh, some of ultra conservative Catholics they preserved, but they had no qualms with the fact that we don't even care about religion, especially not Christianity, because that's a slave religion. We actually prefer Islam. Well, let's have Islamic SS battalions because that religion works very well because of its demand and submission to mold fanatical soldiers. And by the way, Islam has also built in, uh, for historical reasons, an, an enmity with uh, Jews. So this is perfect for us. All the time we've already have pointed out the Jews as our main scapegoat. So, um, but, um, uh, and then it came clean with right, the elite, at least, in the Nazi party, are more hailing to uh, a revised, again, a hijacked version, but a revised version of Norse paganism, right? And occultism. So um, I don't think this who killed Jesus is, is a big deal in terms of the actual, I, I think it's a very good excuse for whoever needs it. But having said all that, I actually don't think that the Jews have any special claim, and this will get your program banned probably from YouTube. Uh, they have been persecuted, but they haven't been exceptionally persecuted compared to other minorities, uh, other than that you can say that in Europe they have for certain periods, because they much more than the other represented a power, potential power bastion, and they represented a sec uh, secluding option that is dangerous for power because uh, they couldn't control them. In addition, they had very brilliant people people who were smart people, people who were good at doing things that at the end of the day also can be regarded as a threat to the powers that be. So so the Jews have been sitting ducks. They, they've secluded themselves. They've been uh, shunned. Uh, they haven't done themselves any favors in terms of being sitting ducks. Uh, of course, the blame is on the people who persecute. But uh, look... If if Jesus wasn't uh, killed by Jews, uh, history would have to invent it, <laughs> to paraphrase uh, our saying. You understand what I mean? I, I do. And now you're really treading into this water that I wanted to talk about, because I think yeah. there is this, what you're saying to me is bordering on anti-Semitic. It really is just in terms of your interpretation of that history. And I'm not saying that I'm saying that's the place where it goes. And so many in the community of the conspiracy have gone. The smear, so, man. It doesn't mean anything anymore. Oh, let's, let's listen to uh, Dr. Jason Giorgiani uh, that my interview with him. And this interview was about image cheapening because he went all right. He went no. alt-right for a very specific reason, and I'll remind people of this. He is uh, an advocate for Iran, an advocate for the Iranian people, whose country was... I would say Persian. No, he, he kind of corrected me in the interview, and he said, oh, okay. he said really, it's not... Uh, uh, Persia is kind of the slang, and it really traces right. back to Iran and Iranian and the origin of the word. and Aryan. Well, he has a PhD, so when he kind of corrects you on that stuff with a long paragraph, you kind of go, okay, I learned mm -hmm. something. But here's his thing, is he's like, Iran has been overrun by these fundamentalist Muslims. I don't like that. So politically, I'm looking for a way in, a way to facilitate the regime change that needs to happen. And this is back a few years ago. And what that leads him to, he he looks to the left and he goes, they're not going to have any part of that. And he looks to the right and he says, yeah, maybe. I mean, maybe I could get in with Trump. Maybe I could push this agenda. It fits more on that side than it does on the other side. And all I care about is a kind of regime change in Iran. So here's the interview that leads to his alt-right image cheapening by partnering with the holo hoaxers, which is what I want to talk about next is holo hoax denial and how it has worked into 
so many ways and we can't root it out. And I think kind of there's even some traces of it in, in what you're saying. Maybe not, maybe not. So we'll see. Reach Steve Bannon and then influence Bannon on Iran policy. That was the idea. Uh, and in order to facilitate this, uh, it was proposed that I take Arctos and fuse it with two other um, right-wing institutions, uh, something called Red Ice Radio and Television, which, by the way, used to be a paranormal broadcaster. They had nothing to do with right-wing politics. Time out, time out, because here's where the thing starts sliding off yeah. the rails. Uh, so Heinrich from Red Ice, right? Mm. I mean, I know who he is. I've listened to him for a long time. And he used and to be like Art Bell back in the he day. He used to be like Art Bell. Yeah. And he would occasionally kind of slip into this, you know, kind of hola hoaxer kind of nonsense. But you could kind of forgive it because it was a very small part of the content. And, hey, shouldn't we be open to research, even if it's wacky research? And, yeah, and all sorts of wacky stuff turns out to be real and stuff like that. But, I mean, at this point now, I mean, he is full, full, full on neo Nazi hola hoaxer kind of thing. So, are are you saying? I haven't, spoke, I haven't spoken to him for four years, so I have no idea. You know, I have no. Well, idea you can just go to his website. I mean, it's the great one is how he refers to uh, Hitler. He regularly has on people who are just, uh, you know, the whole hola hoaxer thing. Really, it, I guess it really tweaks me a little bit because it's anti intellectual, anti history it seems like an op to me because it, it's just trying well, that, to this i can tell you it's not an op um i knew him quite well and and the more important point is that when i knew him back then he wasn't like that okay so we got to remember this is 2016 and if you go back and you look at what red ice was putting out in 2016 he had only just barely started to turn in a kind of right wing political direction most of his shows up to that point had been basically you know, coextensive with coast to coast content. It was about 9 11. It was. I'll stop it. I'll stop it there. You, you could tell me what you think of uh, Heinrich and Red Ice, but I think in 2016, uh, 2016 he was still slinging the. All right, man, he was starting to sling the anti Semitism stuff pretty strong and the neo Nazi great one, uh, the maybe poor. Poor Adolf Hitler is misunderstood. And the the place they always go to, which I want to talk about a little bit if we touch on, is the six million number, which is the key. If ever they bring up six million, like, hey, maybe it's not six million. Then you know they're hola hoaxers. You know they're hola hoax deniers. No, I disagree with that. But it's interesting uh, with the red eyes. Why do you disagree? Uh, I'll tell you. But is, you ask me my opinion of, of this, and I, I haven't commented upon it. Many people have told us after we started that uh, they look at us at, as the reincarnation of it because I think they ruined their own show going all political. It's true that they had an interesting show in the beginning, but then you can see, like you say, you can see the gradual political priority uh, taking place, but then there's like an exaggeration almost overnight. It's like it goes slow, 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 and then boom. And the, the show is completely transformed. So something happened there. What? I don't know. Uh, but um, uh, I agree with you that there is probably a PSYOP component to the uh, revisionism wave that w went on back then. It doesn't mean that those guys are a part of that, that they are deliberate. Uh, uh, if anything, I think they're stooges for it. Uh, but he was, Giordani was saying they are not compromised, those people. Uh, he may be right about that, but you may still be right about the uh, holohox uh, psyop. But look, we have to be able to be nuanced. We have to be able to have different thoughts in our mind. It's If you're going to play the, if you say the wrong thing, then you belong to that faction. Then, then we're back to the black and white and the smear thing. Like anyone is, you know, it's like saying, um, if, you, if you're really an anti-racist, you should really smack down on people who abuse the anti-Semit claim because it waters it out and it means nothing. If you're for women, you should really knock down on women who give fake rape uh, accusations because it hurts 
women who are actually raped. Do you understand the philosophy here? So in the same manner, you, you should be able to discuss the six million thing without being, oh, you're a denier. I, for my sake, have seen enough historic evidence to doubt this six million thing. You've I discussed. Looked at, you've looked at the wrong evidence. I looked at reports uh, before the Second World War where they say six million Jews have been uh, slaughtered. Six million Jews. Have been, it, this number goes back in time. So, so you can I, I see got, it from newspapers. I had this. No, it's just it's just bullshit. It's just whole hoax or bullshit. And you know, I got pulled into this discussion just. Recently, yep. I, every once in a while, I do. Somebody shows up on the forum. They're usually, I hate to say it, but they're usually from a Scandinavian country. And the last guy was from Sweden. And he starts spinning this stuff. And their entry point in is always the six million. And I had a, a discussion with uh, Jan Irvin uh, a while back, uh, who kind of became famous. And it's always this very subtle kind of, they don't want to come right out and do it because, oh my God, they're so persecuted for just doing research. We're just doing research. Well, when someone puts out an idea, that idea should be tested. And when it doesn't hold up, then it should take its rightful place. Not all ideas are kind of partially true equally, you know, the whole flat earth. Well, I, I guess I should be spherically neutral about the shape of the earth because I don't want to offend anyone. Everyone's ideas are equal. So here's the thing on the 6 million. First of all, the Nazis themselves at Nuremberg said six million. <laughs> that was their figure. And those guys were pretty good at counting and they don't get it wrong. Which but Nazis were these? Because the problem is that the guy who was behind it, they didn't take. That's number one. Number two, uh, at Nuremberg, they had a gun to their head. Number three, those who were thrown to the Nuremberg process were the Nazis that uh, they did not cooperate with yada, the real anti-Semitists were were yada yada. It's it's no just no the bullshit. real anti-Semitists were friends with Americans. It's just bullshit from hola hoaxers who are trying to advance Look, that idea. During, the conversation that the conversation during was at the Nuremberg. I'm going to share know that, with right? you. I'm sharing on the screen more recent research. Right, so, uh, and, and I'll comment that. Let me just say, Goering was at the Nuremberg. He okay. said, "Who who is a Jew?" or not, I decide who is a Jew or not. He wasn't very particularly anti-Semit. Um, well, here's the point. Let's get, let's get to the number. Let's get yep. to the number. Because when, so I was forced because of this exchange that I had to kind of go do some, is there new research being done? Which is one of the other claims that the whole hoaxers make is like, hey, they're shutting down the research. No. It's very easy to find research. Here's what I found an article quantifying. There's no debate. This is in some Holocaust. countries is banned by law. Well, I, it, it, this contradicts what you're saying here, Al, because I'm now sharing yep. on the screen okay, let's a see. published paper. Here mm -hmm. it's published in Science Adva Advances, but it's a it's a published paper and you can see the authors and their affiliations and everything else. And what they show is they went back and they, they're playing out the fact that they had some, you know, unique way of using the data sets, the data sets that already have, that everybody has. And but Eichmann, Eichmann was not in the, in, in the, they never took him and he's uh, allegedly the one behind it. And uh, his second in command were, were the dead before, before the, uh, uh, the trials. So I, I don't see how you can say that they said it themselves. But let's see, what does it say here? It says, uh, using unusual da data set originating from railway transport records, this study identifies an extensive phase of hyper-intense killing in which 1.47, a million and a half Jews, more than 25% of the Jews killed over the six years of, the, of World War II were murdered by the Nazi in an intense 100-day Yep. Three month surge. So 1.5 million are murdered in 90 days. And that before is before the uh, Allies take over. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think they're in a, a hurry, thing. right? To They're in a hurry to get rid of all the camp Jews before well, the Allies. Well, we can go in and, and look at the, but this, if you go and read this article, they kind of have all the the breakdown of where they got all this data. And yeah, it's 6 million. That's the number. I, I didn't see that number. I saw 1.5. 
which is 25 percent. Actually, they say more than 25 percent of the Jews killed during the six years. Well, if you mm. read further around, they have the breakdown of the whole six years, and it adds up to basically just a shade under six million. So look, let me say this. I, I have to say a, a couple of things. It's very important. Number one. This area can't be discussed freely in today's climate. It's We're discussing no, it. no, no. Let, let, let me see, let me make some important points. Number one, it's banned by law. You will be arrested if you have the wrong view on this uh, thing in some countries in Europe today. Uh, moreover, you're being censored and guaranteed smeared if you even try to have another opinion, you'll end up like the red eyes people sitting in a basement in the complete underground. Arr, rare, rare, rare. That's number one. So therefore, per definition, there is no clean research. There is no like, oh, sophisticated, we are hashing it out, we're looking objectively on all this. It's too much emotional. Uh, it's too uh, emotionally loaded. It's too many agendas. There's a lot of stuff uh, vested interests in a particular narrative. So we can't pretend that this is like any other objective, trivial thing that we can hash out with thesis, antithesis, synthesis. That's number one. I'm not saying there's no 6 million Jews. I'm just saying this isn't a clean topic to pretend that we can find out. I haven't even read this article, so I can't really comment upon it. What I can comment upon, I will, and I will do it now. But before I do that, I want to uh, make my position clear here. Number one, my grandfather, and this is why you will find more Nazis in Sweden than in Norway. My grandfather was uh, in the resistance movement. He was spreading news about what was going on. They caught him. They tortured him. <laughs> removed his one of his fingers. He had nightmares like all these uh, war heroes in our country to his de death. I remember being a child and, wow, what's this noise? Oh, it's just grandpa, grandpa having nightmares again. So uh, Norwegians have no incentive to be pro-Nazis uh, historically. Uh, most people have someone in their family like me, uh, higher up, who were, uh, you know, uh, tasted Nazism on their body. Uh, number three, uh, it we it doesn't matter if it was 6 million Jews or 4 million Jews or 1 million Jews. This is the big point. So I don't understand these people who, uh, you know, they, they start with doubting the numbers and then they end, end up seeking Heil, right? Because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. All we need to know is what was this po political ideology? What did it lead to? Uh, what, what, you know, what, what, what good is it or what bad is it? It's plenty of bad stuff. You don't need the number of Jews or people dying to know this is, this is a rather uh, non-constructive thing to be organizing uh, society by. And that's the important thing because there are mechanisms in the Nazi uh, philosophy and ideology that has survived. They got rid of some exotic stuff like the racial stuff, etc. But it's still going super strong today. And uh, we can get more back to that. So look, they were a suppressive, they were an anti-liberty. That's all you need to know. You had no freedom to, uh, if they had won, you and me could not say that 6 million Jews died because we would have been in even more trouble than we're in now if we say they didn't die. You understand? So, so I don't. I never understood these people who find problems with the pro war propaganda and then go full Nazis. Because obviously, after forty-five, the victor write the history, and obviously there has been lies and propaganda, exaggerations, alterings of facts. This is what happens in, in uh, propaganda, and especially after a war is won. So when I see historical, uh, what looks as uh, propaganda and lies in the aftermath, for example, that Hitler died, I don't become a Nazi by that. I just realized, okay, these are one of the things, like the moon landing thing. Of course, there were... This was a big propaganda stunt towards Soviet Union. So, you, like But that doesn't mean like they never subject. went to the moon. It's the nuance. You have to have the nuance. What did you say? 
So let's not get sidetracked on the moon. I mean, that could be like five. Yeah, 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 I agree. But it's an example of you have to have nuance. It doesn't mean either we went to the moon and it was exactly as they told us or we didn't go and everything is a lie. There are realities somewhere in between. And I think the same is here because here's why I'm, I I cannot say honestly, 100% that uh, I'm convinced it was 6 million Jews. Why can't I say that? Is it because I have an emotional agenda or a, Polit- no, it's because I have seen, and I can show you the same thing because these are excerpts show me, from. Show me, you haven't shown me anything. I keep showing you stuff and you haven't shown I me. Will if show you want to come but... back, if you want to come back and show me, show me. But otherwise, Go, I keep. Oh, sh- I will show you. I will show you. The classic. So, this is the classic thing. Look, the ethos of Skeptico is follow the data, look for the deception, and then use discernment. Yeah. So yeah. the data keeps That's what I'm pointing doing. to 6 million. And the data is important for you to say. A couple of times you've tried to slide, you know, well, what difference does it really make if uh, Jose- if Josephus said You'd, that and yeah. then he washed his hands and that we've always had this relationship between Christianity and Judaism? Hell yes, it matters. It matters because the Nazis rebooted that as, an, as a way of persecuting the Jews. And now you brought up 6 million. Does it really matter if it's 6 million or 5 million or 1 million? It does, because here's the facts. Follow the data. Who said it at Nurem- Who said it at Nuremberg? Uh, right here in this article, you'll see that it's uh, no less than our friend Adolf Eichmann. And uh, here he says in, in- Wait a minute. Eichmann wasn't in Nuremberg. He- I, I, t- Correct. So the conversation he had with Eichmann, the, uh, so it's said at Nuremberg, but it's also said by Eichmann according to the 1961 testimony of this guy who recalled how Eichmann told me that according to his information, some 6 million Jews had perished until then 4 million in in extermination camps and the remaining 2 million through shooting the operation units and other causes of disease. And then in here, they also have the Nuremberg testimony. So in November, 1945 hotel, who is the guy just mentioned testified for the prosecution at the Nuremberg trials. So it is said at Nuremberg and no one denies it at Nuremberg. It's the well-known figure. And if you've got something else, you, you can bring it. I do. But, okay. Pop it up. Yep. The screen. Well, I don't have it readily available, but you can find it among other things in Pharrell's book. He republishes yeah, bring it, it there. Bring it. Sure. Well, we can lay it over here in the aftermath of the show as a illustration. Here's the th- two things that make me doubt that figure. And again, if even if they just caught, killed one Jew, I would have the exact same opinion of them well, as no, if they killed six men. No, no, no. A regime killing people, murdering people, is a bad regime. Why would the numbers matter? One person's of life the is as matter. much. No, no. If 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 a regime is killing, okay, where do you draw the line then? Is it okay to kill thousand people? Is it okay to kill ten thousand? Where do you draw the line? It's when important do they become to bad? understand the data, and it's important to understand the deception. What you are pointing out—that's not out, my question. Uh, but here, here you is, say it doesn't matter. Uh, you, you say it matters. I say it doesn't matter. The data, the so data if it matters, matters, the data always matters because it no, no, does no, 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 a million no, versus data, six million. The, a million versus six million does matter. And part of the reason that it matters, both in terms of understanding history, in the same way of understanding whether or not Josephus really wrote that, understanding whether or not. Uh, Pontius Pilate really said that those facts matter. And when Christians gloss over that, and it, like you said, which is the ultimate cop out, but I get it. You know, who cares? Who cares really? Well, if you're Christian, you have to care. If you're supporting in some way, if you're justifying or in some way saying, hey, maybe that Hitler guy wasn't so bad, maybe the regime wasn't bad, you better get the data right. And if you say he he was really, really bad and we should do everything we can to make sure that that, that, that doesn't happen and we should root out the extent to which I agree, to which – Henry Kissinger, God bless him, but he brought the Fourth Reich. He brought the Fourth Reich to the U.S., and we are living in the Nazification of America, which we won't even get to because that's the subtle point. You better get those 
you better get those numbers right as a starting point and you better understand the deception you better yeah, we can't get them the right people who we, are calling it, those numbers out is a way to not use it so you can say you can never get there but i just showed you a study where they got... no, what do you make of the following then because you're an honest guy so you will follow the data here's the data i've seen i've seen the uh, newspaper articles genuine uh you know, representations from back in the day, no, no, not falsifications. You can pull them up yourself. Well, they say uh, 6 million Jews terminated, 4 million Jews terminated. This is before the Second World War. This goes back to uh, turn of 1800, 1900. I discussed this with Farrell, and we, we, we kind of thought there was something ritualistic about this. Well, as for the number of Jews killed in the Second World War or in the camps, or what, uh, because those are two different things, I've seen also newspaper articles starting with, I think it was two million and then going up to four and then going up to six. So I've seen different figures there. And if there were six million people died in a camp, all of them weren't Jews. But if there were six million Jews died in a the camp, then you have to throw in a few more million to account for homosexuals, handicapped, communists, socialists, union workers, Catholics, um, gypsies, etc. So uh, all in all, millions of millions perished. I'm saying from a value uh, uh, vantage point, it doesn't matter if it was 10,000 or 6 million. Why on earth would you follow a regime? killing 10,000. Why on earth would you follow a regime killing 100 people? You can just analyze Nazism or any kind of fascism and you can see, okay, these people are not for freedom. They are not going to... Truth will have no matter here because it's all about the will of, of whoever is in charge, uh, like we see in today's corporatism, censorship, smearing, uh, demonization. Uh, also, it's the, the, the less intelligent people you know, mediocrity is being promoted. Intelligent people and intelligent society is decaying in such systems. So you don't need six million Jews to be against a Nazi philosophy. Any thinking person would be against Nazi philosophy. But if you're into truth, then you owe it to your intellectual honesty to say, hey, hey there's something wrong with some of these most extreme. Send me the gas chamber debate. I never studied that thing. So I, I will never, I will never say that I'm convinced that everybody was perished by gas chamber. What I know is that Jews and non-Jews died in the camps. That's enough for me. I don't care if they were gassed or they were tortured in other ways. That's all we need. So this is like a derailing of the whole point of the discussion when people start discussing these numbers and making a lot of vest investments for whatever these numbers are. It's crazy, man. But if we are to discuss these numbers, we have to be honest. And I'm honest because I've seen different numbers being published back in the day. Um, I've not read these studies. I can't relate to that, but I can relate to what the news media, who were propagandists back in the day, said about these things. I also have seen newspapers going back to the late 1800s where they claim 4 million Jews dead, 6 million Jews dead, what on earth is, is this about? Are we saying 6 million Jews have died like every 20 years since the late 1800s? No, it's impossible. So something is up here. There's some kind of psyop. There's some kind of propaganda thing. There's some kind of vested interest. And we are being sidetracked if we marry ourselves to the details of the propaganda. And then it's an either or. Either you're against Nazism or you're for Nazism, and how you approach these small snippets of propaganda points will determine that. No, that's crazy, man. You can be against Nazism just by a neutral analyze. Look, if they never came to power, but they published what they were thinking, you could still be against Nazism because it's all there in their uh, philosophy. All fascism, uh, uh, you can just analyze and realize you're against this. And... Uh, uh, when it comes to, uh, I challenge you again, at what number is it okay for a regime to kill innocent people? Since that's you say it matters. Well, <laughs> it doesn't matter. One person, and that's enough it for matters. me. It's a murder regime. Well, of course, of course it matters. And, you know, so again, you're going to bring it, but, you know, here's another article. I was just pulling up. Okay, okay, okay. 10,000, where is the limit if it matters how many they kill? 
I say one is more is one too much. No one. You say that. no. You it has to be really, six million. You don't. Really yes, believe I really that. believe that. No, of course it, I believe that. The important well, okay, point. Okay, let, let's take an individual. At what point is an individual murderer to be punished? Is it when he kills one person? Is it when he kills ten person? Is it when he kills hundred people? When is it okay to to murder? So you're gonna you're gonna bring your evidence. The latest article that I brought up said what I've heard every scholar who's ever looked at it is the number ranges between five million and six million, and most four, of the four, four and six, according to newspaper published after the World War. Well, and, I just pulled up an article, and if you read it, it says that the, the article published right after at, at the Nuremberg, it was the if you want it. Okay, so you you kind of brought it up, but so there's different newspapers. To, exactly right. So. Mm -hmm. And there were no Nazi newspapers after after they they lost the war. There are several ways in which historians have been able. But to they do admit the that there's different six numbers. million. That's, these methods. That's interesting. So they do admit there were different claims. Okay. Yes, there are several ways Good. in which historians have been able to derive a figure of nearly six million, and the fact that these methods have not changed since the Jewish death toll was declared at the Nuremberg trials in 1945, because it was declared there. The Tribunal of Nuremberg declared that the number of Jewish victims to be 5.7 million. The Tribunal's calculations, as well as subsequent ones, first examined pre-war and post-war census to determine the population of Jews in Europe before and after the war. Then they go on and they have a bunch of different ways of calculating it. They have the meticulous records at the death camps. When is this study from? Well, this is, is right the... after. This is right after. But the Nuremberg. study you're, you're citing. At Nuremberg Trials, 1945. No, no, no. That's a source. I'm talking about the study, the article. The, the study is uh, 2019. Mm. Okay. 2019, 1.5 million in 100 days. So, yeah, it's just, you, you know, so t just to be uh, on, a, uh, what I'm seeking is, uh, again, the, the deceptive part of this and how it's used and how it's been used over and over again, which is this uh, six million figure is the nose of the camel to get people into this kind of whole hoax denial. Hey, you don't really know anything. There's co some conspiracy against well, the Nazis. I've seen I've seen the gas chamber as the nose of the camel. I've seen uh, other things uh, at least as effective uh, being the nose of the camel. They oh here's evidence for this, evidence for that, blah blah blah. I never bothered to look into it. So therefore, I cannot, you know, make an opinion. But I don't. Again, I don't need it. I know they killed people. <laughs> I mean, it's still not long enough time have gone by to really, honestly, say that if it were two thousand years ago, we could doubt, right? But there's still people alive today who were victims, and certainly relatives of people alive today. So we, we, we don't really need, but, but for you, it matters, obviously, how what, many. No, no. What matters to me is the red ice thing, is the red ice radio thing and the undercurrent of the whole hoaxer kind of vibe in right. our community, because I've run into it multiple times. And that's what I think holo holo hoaxing does and Holocaust denial does, is it sucks people in and it breaks apart this genuine concern we have of back to Klaus Schwab and what they're trying to socially engineer us into. If they right. can carve off a piece of that group and say, oh, there they are. Those are the guys out there with the neo-Nazi flags and go talk to them and they'll tell you they have a bunch of reasons to believe it. And they'll say, hey, did you ever look at the six million figure? And did you know the gas chambers? And they'll have and they'll call it research. And if you listen, if you're not tuned into this, if you haven't done your own research, at the end of the day, you'll say, gee, maybe there is something to those guys. Maybe there mm. is something to flat earth. Maybe there is something to no rabies, no virus. And now you've quarantined yourself into this intellectual ghetto that you can't get out of, but you'll find mm. good company. Because Pull it's suppressed. Down. It shouldn't be suppressed. It should be all be in the open. And we should use um, arguments and truths. This is a, 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 a unintended consequence by dumbing down society. People don't have the ability to do source criticism. They don't have the ability to do proper analysis. They don't know how to do re research. 
I remember this uh, video, what's it called? Uh, it's about Hitler. Um, some, some dude in England took, he made a propaganda movie, basically. And people, an impressive youths watching that who doesn't know much about history, they end up thinking that, you know, poor Hitler and poor Nazis. Um, what's it called? It's one of the most famous ones. It was in YouTube, had millions of views. So, yeah, people are not skilled enough to... Uh, yeah, people will be uh, persuaded by uh, whatever uh, propaganda manipulation techniques come their way. Like I'm sure the Jews were when they were screaming for Jesus' blood. Uh, so this is there's nothing new in history here. But um, uh, what's interesting to discuss, Alex, is the point you because we've we we're stuck in two D now, and it bores me deep into the soul. What is important to uh, point out here is that while people are fighting about labels and about outer manifestations, like, for example, you have Nazis, Nazi sympathizers, who believe that uh, uh, Hitler uh, killed himself, and then you have Nazis who believe he didn't kill himself, and they can't even agree. And then you have anti-Nazis believing he killed himself, and then you have anti-Nazis who doubt he killed himself. And all four factions use their story to argue for why this is important. Now we're getting somewhere because if you just realize that power do not is only loyal to one thing, and that is power. It is to mammon. It is to it's money, control, brute force. And it will use anything to stay. Authoritarian power will use anything to maintain control. The only thing actually in modern times threatening it, uh, as I see it, is Bitcoin, but that's another debate. Now, if we realize that, then we will see that uh, why the power, the, the, the Wall Street fascists and the whitewashed Nazis uh, joined forces after World War II. And there, the story could have ended there, and you could make a natural evolution up until today. But the story, unfortunately, didn't end there because those on the Nazi sides were loyal to um, an ex exile power uh, symbolized through Martin Bormann. Bormann died um, before, uh, you know, in the early 70s, and another guy took over. And this faction has been very active as a part of the power uh, system. Another thing happened. Israel became a, a fascist uh, regime very early, and uh, they buried the hatchet. The last person they went after was Eichmann. After that, even uh, the Nazi hunter Simon Wiesenthal was complaining about this. After that, they made a deal with uh, the powers in Argentina, the exile Reich, if you want, and that was to move. Now everything would, was to become corporatism. And uh, uh, if you analyze the Israeli regime, it is uh, like the South African regime was. It is apartheid and it is uh, heavily uh, fascist and authoritarian. It has some semblance still of democracy. It does. But uh, it's very uh, root uh, decaying, uh, accelerated. Now, this is also an apparent contradiction, huh? Why could, uh, how could uh, the Jewish state, which was to be a, supposed to be a sanctuary for Jews, how could that, you know, develop so close to Nazism? You know, we are the chosen people. Because this is how history works. Uh, it's not about the outer things. It's about the inner things. This is why Christianity, for example, can go, or oh, Islam started as a Christian sect. You can have a system starting with one values, but sooner or later it's taken over and it starts expressing other values. So um, today we have a, a semi-fascist structure taking over in the West, especially in America. But I would say include Europe too, because there's no really dissent anymore. Uh, taken over. It's the corporatism. But... On the value things, where Hitler were insisting on goose-stepping and, uh, you know, measuring the sizes of heads or the pigment in the eyes or, you know, stuff like that, they have replaced that with the Vogue thing because they can 
take anything. If you go back to Bush's, uh, George Bush, when he was the symbolic uh, figurehead, then it was more Christian conservatism values. So this authoritarian uh, creature can have any value system attached to it. I believe that they are using whatever is trending in the culture, but they don't really care about homosexuals. They don't really care about, you know, pregnant women, etc. Uh, at the end of the day, they only care about what they need to maintain their system, but they use whatever is in vogue or, or, or dominant in, in the or a trend in the system. So right now they're using vogue. But that vogueness thing, I think it will die. And I don't think it's long till we see it die, but it will be completely replaced with something else. Maybe the pendulum will switch back to, you know, the opposite that women back to the home and uh, <laughs> the man should who knows what values will be infused into it i believe anyway politics shouldn't deal with those things i think culture should deal with those things politics should focus on how we organize society the economics the structure etc but that's just me hey so to my point then we have the same we have the natural successors of these fascists this the children and grandchildren of these people are still in power. And I don't think these children and, and the, the, these grandchildren believe in those old ideals anymore. Because when Kissinger grew up, they were actually racist. The people surrounding him were the old Wall Street fascist people. And they were thoroughly racist and they were uh, thoroughly sexist and they were thoroughly, you know, I don't always call for other religions, but they had those views. They have died out. But has the system changed? On the outside, yes. We've had, uh, you know, the hippie revolution, oh, free sex. So certain cultural values have changed. But if you look at the real mechanisms of what's going on politically, it's worse, I would say, now than ever. Uh, or maybe it's not worse than ever because it was probably worse before we got the internet. But we had this taste of freedom for a while. And now they try to roll it back to how it was before the internet. Only it's, it's going to be worse because before the internet, we had free press, physical press. We don't have that anymore. So we're stuck in fascism and we don't realize it because we're, we are we just look at the symbolism. Oh, what is the color of the flag? What is the, you know, uh, uh, what do they call it? Uh, value briefing? No, um, they have this expression. You know, so you brief. a little bit closer to the mic if you can. Yeah, value briefing is that what they call it when you, ah, oh, you know, you 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 virtue signaling. You know, they virtue signal and they fall for that. It, it's like the old cartoon. One American bomb is gray; the other one has rainbow flags and etc. This is the difference. Th th this is the difference without distinction. This is what we have to understand, and it's true if you go back two thousand years to the Josephus things and the birth of Christianity is true about the 1945 and the Holocaust. And it's not just in sim. This is the last point I want to make in this rant. It's not just the symbolism that's the same. Uh, I mean, uh, not the symbol, the essence that's the same. It's not just the archetype or the values that are, is the same. It's also, it's more, it's worse than that. It's an historical lineage. It's an actual inheritance. It's the same people in power and the children of those people. And you can track this historically. I've done this in many shows. Plenty of researchers have done this. You can track it historically back. So you see a direct line. It's not just that bankers woke up one day and now they you know, agree with their forebears. It's the direct line. It's the same people. It's the same factions. It's the same values. These values are anti-humanistic. They are anti-liberty. And they are pro-elite. But that elite doesn't have to be defined religiously in terms of Jew or Christian. It doesn't have to be defined ethnically, like you know, an Aryan or, or a Jew or whatever, if that's even a ethnicity. It, you can put an or, or class for that matter. So it's the elites and how they have, you know, the, the ruling philosophy and the elites and, and the future elites are heading all the way down to transhumanism, which has been present among all these manifestations, not just the Nazis. So, so that's my point. And if we discuss it like that, then we can 
elevate this discussion to a more 3 or 4D uh, level. So let me ask you this, as we kind of move to kind of wrap this up. So, to, you know, back to my original premise for kind of doing this show, and you've been, you've added a lot to it, and I knew that you would, because I know this is something that you've looked at from a lot of different angles, different from me. But to what extent, the, the basic premise from these Johnny Vedmore thing and the Klaus Schwab thing, and his, I think it's a head fake to, to, to tie that to the Nazis, uh, unless we're going to say Same tie values. it to the American Nazis, were the Nazis, you know, it's Henry Kissinger is the next Nazi that is the uh, no, worse paper than clip Nazi. that is part of this thing. Okay. So to what extent do our understanding of Nazis define our understanding of Jews? To what extent does our understanding of Jews define our understanding of Nazis? I'll let you have the floor. Okay, look, wrap look, it man. up, but I do want to say thank you so much for doing this with me. Yeah, but this is, oh, it's a new bag. Look, man, the American state was hijacked after World War II. And the final um, move, the final step of that hijack was the assassination of JFK. By the way, oh, I hope RFK can make a difference. But this, the, you have to understand that this plague is still among us and it goes directly back to the Nazis. It does not go back to the Hitler faction because Hitler went rogue, okay? So so they uh, kind of, uh, he, he was authorized eventually. But it goes back to the, the value system that they had. It goes also back to the American fascists, the Wall Street fascists, let's just call them that. And these people try to fuse and topple Churchill and Hitler it, uh, with the uh, Hess coming to England, etc. It failed, but they managed to fuse it uh, after the war. After FDR died or was killed. And, um, but, but whatever you think up until that point, whether you think or, um, Roosevelt was killed or whether you think Hitler survived, it doesn't matter because you can just start there and then you can see that they fused. They fused with the networks, with the spy networks. They fused with the banking and the corporation system. They fused with the uh, scientists and CIA became dominated by Nazis loyal to an extraterritorial state, not loyal to the president. They lost control on the American side. Yeah, no, the Joseph Farrell stuff. It just and, and I'm, just I'm down with some. Yeah, I'm down with some of that. But I mean, but, you're kind of going a far field because I was bringing it back to the to the Jewish thing, which you yeah, can't I really will, square I will, I will that. Tie it you, to the, you the Jews. You can't. No, 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 no. You can't square that. And that's one of the things that they go. The people go with that with the breakaway civilization. You can't account for. You know, Epstein was about, and it's so interesting to hear all the people who are interested now and. In, in Epstein and all the rest the of that. Anti Semitic I mean, Nazis he's Mossad. died. He out. is Mossad. I mean, yeah. Epstein is Mossad at the same time he's working and for the Zionism. CIA. So I think, you know, you, yeah. I, I don't want to go there into the 2D, 3D, 5D, who the cares? And that's a, a no, but, but we can term. take it 2D. But uh, the point the point is that that there is another there is another player on the field, as Joseph Farrell correctly points out, that has to be kind of factored in here and we can't do it in the time we have left we've already gone no. for two and a half hours but so. let, let, let's not let's not factor them in let's just see that the cia uh the nato nasa uh, the corporations and the banking system you just take those five power players among many even un actually we're dominated by people with the same value system both on the american side and on the exile nazi side and uh, Included in this became the new Jewish state. Uh, the new Jewish state was uh, started out like a socialist project, but it soon ended up uh, in uh, a fascist uh, manifestation, which evidence is the Zionist. Is, evidence isn't there for that. You know, it's a really good book. I don't know if you read it, Phenomena by uh, Annie Jacobson, and she traces the whole oh mind God. control thing and the whole thing. Yeah, to, and, and, to Soviet. Yeah, it's a psyop. It, the whole book is a psyop. Uh, uh, what? To, to, what is a, what is Psyopy about it? Which 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 of her book, by the way? I just told you, to? phenomena. 
Oh, okay. I was referring to the one, uh, the Roswell uh, uh, thing. Well, uh, I don't trust her because she. Uh, here's the reason. First but of that, all, that, her... that, you, you don't know the you don't know the the research. So the but the point is, if you look oh. at phenomena, you look at the history of MK Ultra, you look at the history of mind control, you look at the. She's uh, a limited hangout man. She is a limited hangout, but when a limited hangout is hanging out more than anyone else, then that is your starting point for the limited hangout. And so, you know, the, the, a limited hangout against what is the mainstream scientific understanding, which is that the consciousness is totally a byproduct of the brain and nothing happens and there is no extended realm. So we need a limited hangout that rejects yeah. that idea. And we also need remember the, the, one of the most compelling parts I thought of the book is at the end when she's talking about Uri Geller and mm. the long history of the early Geller, Uri Geller. And anyone you know can go watch the videos that they did at the Stanford Research Institute of the experiments they did with Uri Geller. But where she is at, she's in Israel with Uri Geller. And he's going around and bending all the spoons like he does, which doesn't make any sense. It completely defies our understanding of science in the same way that UFOs do. You cannot bend spoons like that. It's not a trick. Other people, Dean Radin has one on his, has one on his desk of a bent spoon, not by Uri Geller. There's literally hundreds and hundreds of people who have attended spoon bending parties and this happens. So it's real. But Uri Geller is there meeting with Mossad intelligence why, and, while Annie Jacobson is there at the residence mm. of the prime minister. So it puts a different perspective. No, it's not all, oh, these fascists are kind of teamed up. Everyone has their own jersey and is playing their own game. And that's uh, back factions among the power elites? Sure. Well, factions and power elites, I mean, factions among... The war, you say power elite, somebody has to run the world. So <laughs> that that is that is the point, really. That's throughout history, someone is going to grab control and run the world, and it's going to be one group or another. So it is factions among the power yeah. elite. That's history. Yep. Yep. Well, I mean, there's no contradiction. Uh, this is the problem. People think it's a contradiction because suddenly they say see Jews. Or Zionists, which isn't the same thing, uh, in play. Some Jews and some Zionists in play. And even the state of Israel and Mossad in play. Of course, they have been a part of the power elite since, uh, uh, I don't know, 60s at least. So uh, that's not a contradiction. Uh, as for Annie Jacobson, remember her sources are, it's like this real whistleblowers versus fake. Vinman or whatever they call yeah, yeah, it. He's do, called this Ukrainian guy who... Who, who did uh, uh, Trump Gate? Uh, no, uh, Russia Gate. He's boosted by the by the powers that be. What Whereas do you know about, Assange what do you is know rotting. About MK Ultra? What do you know that is fake yeah, so, about what she's no, reporting no, on MK Ultra? Let me all let me I, answer. I know that. it pretty well, and I didn't find it, I, know. I didn't find anything that contradicted what I already knew. The only thing I found is limited hangout pulling yeah. up short of in the same way that you do, which is that. The, I'll the explain real... it. It's a good question, but give me time to to explain it. So, what she did with the book before there is that she, uh, I'm as not soon as in the book before there, no, yeah, it's a pattern. It's a pattern. Let me explain. First, she immediately after Farrell's book, Roswell and the Rush, she comes out and says, "Yes, it's exactly like that. Only it was the Soviet. It wasn't the Nazis, because here the vested interest is to derail our attention from how much." The Nazification happened with American state. Liberty, all that shit went out the door. The wrong people won. The right people were eliminated. And her sources are silly. official. Her the sources Pharrell are... Roswell thing is silly. It doesn't, doesn't even... matter. doesn't matter. The problem is that people can't realize that Nazis were amalgated into the American system because with the, the Nazis comes values. Uh, and her sources are all... You know, lining up official people still in. It's like all your reasons for doubting the Tom DeLong thing applies to her. Only you're not applying it to her. And then comes the next book. And you will notice something. Everything she writes about is already written about. She's really taking stuff that is already phenomenal. there. 
And then that's she's not true. That's not true with phenomena. Read. I'll tell you what, I'm going to even cut this out. Read yep. phenomena. If we can come back and, and talk about it, but I don't think you, I, I mean, what do you know about Uri Geller? <laughs> what do I know? I'd never met him, but, but, uh, but you don't even think he's real. Oh yeah. Yeah. A real, uh, how that his abilities are real. Yes. Yeah. I'm open to that. Yes. You're absolutely. open to that. Yeah. Yeah, you, I mean, are, I, you, are you open to the possibility that he's uh, fake? I remember, you know what? I was uh, 16 years old. I saw a recording of him on Norwegian television, a recording, 10 year old recording or something. And he appealed to everyone at home to do something. And I did it. I can't remember if it was a spoon or the clock because I've, I've been manipulating clocks and spoon all my life. And I think it, happened, it was the clock. Right? Of course it happened. And then I realized later that it was a recording. I thought it was live. You understand? Yeah. That's my first meeting, I think, with Uri Geller. So, he, so a broken clock started to work. And he was the, he was the, like the uh, nexus for that. Of course, it was my own. Um, but yes, yeah. So, so that's my first meeting with Yuri Geller. So this this foray into extended consciousness contradicts a lot of this other stuff that you spin out there, you know, because this would immediately, yeah, because this would immediately take us to non-human intelligence, right? Because right. that is the big barrier to non-human intelligence is that consciousness can't survive death. Consciousness can't leave the body. So right. we'd immediately have to look at non-human intelligence, particularly ET intelligence in a completely different perspective. Now your buddy, Joseph Farrell, who I'm always picking on, is he <laughs> down with that in terms of there are these extended consciousness realms where things are happening that are uh, from a conventional scientific physics standpoint, unexplainable. It is unexplainable that Uri Geller can do that, that Uri Geller can precipitate you doing that. It's uh, it, it therefore takes all physics and puts physics as kind of a, uh, it obsoletes physics as being completely incomplete in terms of our understanding, our understanding of propulsion, our understanding of how UFOs work, our extending, our understanding of interstellar tr travel. All that is out the window because you made that clock move. Do you get that? Yeah, I guess you can. You can uh, put all that. Look, look, if if you show me a miracle. I'm not going to change my paradigm. Twenty, uh, you talked to the wrong guy. Ninety-nine percent will change their paradigm. If I was a skeptic, change it to one hundred percent. But in my paradigm, uh, there's room for. It's much more nuanced than that. So I don't need a miracle to like. Oh, now I change my mind. There's room for many, many potential um, nuances to either that or that. So in Jacobson's case, I'm sure that there's an agenda they want out, but they know already that this, look, the point of a limited hangout isn't to, isn't to neither to contradict the established or to introduce a revolution. It is to stifle the revolution because so many already doubt the official that we have to spin this dissent so we put in something that admits that yes the official isn't true but here is how it is true you understand so that we don't start you know going to and this is the same with the with the holocaust thing it's like as soon as people start adopting some of the propaganda that was made then oh you're supposed to be a nazi if you don't I don't buy into that. I don't so, buy into that either, but that's not the kind of conversation we want to have. The kind no, of conversation no, we want to have. But, but that is what people it. do, right? Well, uh, that's what not us people, not the, the two of us talking here. But the, the thing that, the that I would challenge you on, and, and we can follow yeah. up on any of these, and I'll roll into the show if you want to just send me a telegram message with some of this stuff. But Joseph Farrell and Roswell Nazi thing is, is a non-starter once you understand that you made that clock move, because when you make that clock move, now you have to incorporate in all the remote viewing stuff, all the stuff outside of consciousness, all the 
Joe McMonagle, uh, remote viewing Mars a million years ago. You have to John Brandenburg and the uh, profiles of the isotopes. All that comes into play. Joseph Farrell has his fingers in the dike saying, look, guys, I'm going to give you this explanation that keeps everything in this materialist paradigm. As soon as that dam breaks, then the most parsimonious explanation is UFO, UAP, non-human intelligence, ET. It just is. Uh, again, that's a black white thing I don't buy into. There's well, room there's a in reality on, there's burden for proof Nazis. on one side or the other. Look, someone, you, we agree that human beings master anti-gravity, right? Uh, I don't no. care who. Okay, no. so you don't so, think any, no well, human I mean, in history, if, 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 if in you, ancient times, in this time, no, no deep state, nobody has ever managed to break the laws of the physics we have presented. Well, if, if you expand it, like, you know, like uh, a, a lot of people really like... Uh, Who's that guy is on Joe Rogan all the time? Eric Weinstein. Yeah. I do not. I think he's, I think there's so many holes in his argument. Be super popular, millions and millions of views yeah. on Rogan and Lex Friedman and all the rest of that. But the one thing that he says as a, 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 a an elite mathematician who's plugged into physics, he goes, anti-gravity? He goes, look, here are the people. Here's the line of uh, published work from back in the 50s. He goes, I know the line of uh, who's connected to this technology. He goes, I've talked to those people. They do not. They say there's no there there in terms of people who are working on it. He said, we'd love to work on it. We have this guy down here in Austin, Texas, this guy here. But I know the research. It isn't there. And that's another Joseph Farrell kind of silliness. Is that well, You think Bob Lassar is making it up? Yes. Hmm. Okay. Well, I mean, Bob if, Lazar, if there's no if there's Bob no black Lazar research is exposed by this this most recent round. I mean, he he Stanton Friedman kind of busted his ass five years ago. But okay, okay, but, and never mind that. If it's only white research, there's no such thing as black research. Of course, although we there's know black it research. Is. Of course, okay. but there's no black research in gravity. Only yes, COVID there, there and... is. But so if you take here's what you do to if you want to get as close as you could to understanding that is you take the smartest guy in the room and I don't think Eric Weinstein is the smartest guy in the room no. but let's let him stand in because but the smartest guys are hijacked into black projects no that's this that's his point is that we still have a basically functioning uh academia and research community that is filled with uh, co-conspirators and and he himself admits that now more than ever it's stifled it's not uh yes but the point uh, is we can it. we can trace the fingerprints of the scientists who would be involved in okay, this let me ask you this can, hold on do you understand do you understand my point so you yeah. can follow their record of published papers you can follow the record of okay. their research you can follow the record of their research associates and the people that work under them and you can go talk to them and you can put together a pretty good record of is there some huge thing that is outside of that. And in the say, 50s, well, they you know what? There wasn't enough time. There isn't enough time in the day to have all that kind of stuff. Okay, okay. Let, 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 let's, let's move away from that approach. I have another approach that will bring back the same point. Although in the 50s, there were open articles about their anti gravity yes. research. But let me ask you this Are you open to the idea that there are some physical organisms, humanoids? No, let's forget about biological beings as ufos like that they are biological or extra dimensional or time travelers all that are you open to the idea that on some other planet or or, or, or bo celestial body there are beings who has who master anti-gravity sure. are you open to that idea sure okay then i don't understand what is the big deal with humans not mastering it then Thanks again to Al Borealis from Forum Borealis for joining me today on Skeptico. Boy, I usually tee up a question. Be too many of them to do. <laughs> we covered so much ground. And uh, I do really respect Al and where he's coming from. And, uh, you know, it got a little tense there for a minute. But in, in general, I mean, you just don't find people who are willing to engage at this depth when 
you have some kind of differences of opinion. And I really respect and appreciate that about Al. And I love his show. I've learned so much from his show. So uh, that's off to him. And uh, I really appreciate him joining me. Stay with me on Skeptico. Let me hear from you. Let me know what kind of shows we might do together. That is, you have somebody you'd love to hear on Skeptico. And I'd like to work with you to make that happen because I think that's fun and engaging and brings us together and kind of creates a reality to this thing where I'm just talking into this microphone over here and then you're magically kind of listening on the other end. Let's make it real. Let's close the loop. Until next time, take care. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.